Okay, this is um, an example of using the p-value method on lesson 8.6. This problem comes from page 446 in your textbook. Here's a problem. It has been reported that the standard deviation of the speeds of drivers on Interstate 75 near Findlay, Ohio is 8 miles per hour for all vehicles. A driver feels from experience this is very low. A survey is conducted. And for 50 drivers, the standard deviation is 10.5 miles per hour. At alpha equal 0.05, is the driver correct? So the report is about a standard deviation. But the driver is claiming that that's too low. So I think the way I interpreted it this is that the driver is making a claim that he thinks the standard deviation is actually higher than what was reported. So to start this problem off, step A. We're going to write our null and our alternative hypotheses. And what symbol would I want to use? Standard deviation, right? Population standard deviation symbol is sigma. Now, <clears throat> it says it's reported it's 8 miles per hour. He thinks it's too low. So this, I'm assuming I'm just calling it he, but this driver um, could be a she, thinks it's actually bigger than 8. Okay. So we're going to say that the claim is that the population standard deviation is greater than 8 miles per hour. We're going to say that's that driver's claim. So the null would be that's less than or equal to 8 miles per hour. Any questions about that? All right, step B. We're, using the, we're going to use the p-value method. The p-value method, you don't have to find the critical values. You go right to your test value. Your test value is going to be, in this case, a chi-squared value. Anytime that you're making a hypothesis about a variance or standard deviation, use the chi-squared formula and the chi-squared chart. So the formula is n minus 1, your sample size minus 1, times your s squared, your sample variance, over sigma squared, your population variance. So in this case, n minus 1, you're going to look at your sample size. Sample size was 50 drivers. So you're going to do 50 minus 1, which would be 49, times S. Standard deviation in the sample was 10.5. So you're going to do 10.5 squared. I might need some help from you guys as far as typing this in the calculator. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have sigma squared, so 8 squared. Now, if they, if they told you the variance, then you wouldn't have to square these numbers. If they said the variance was 8, then I would just put 8 here, because you put the population variance on the bottom. But since they're giving you the population standard deviation, you have to square this number. Same thing with the sample. If this said sample variance was 10.5, then I wouldn't square it. It would already have been squared for you. But if it says standard deviation is 10.5, then you have to square it. So you type that thing in your calculator. Anybody know what that comes out to? 84.41. 84.41. Anybody else come up with that? Mm -hmm. We've got some agreement? OK. So there's your test value. Um, Part C, we're going to try to find the p-value. p-value equal blank. So chi-squared distribution is a skewed right distribution with positive values. So it looks something like this. All right. Depending on the sample size, this curve changes shape. But it's always going to be skewed right somewhat. <coughs> um, because we have a greater than and an alternative hypothesis, we're looking at a right tail test. Our test value is 84.41. The area outside of that test value is called the p-value. So we're trying to figure out what that area is. All right. To do that, we're going to look at the chi-squared distribution chart. Is Zoom this out a little bit here. Sample size of 49. So, and actually. Um, I'm going to have a hard time using this chart because of the fact that um, I don't have 49 in this chart. So, But <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to use 50. Okay, I think we can get close enough using 50. Um, so we're going to look, even though we should be using 49, what's the sample size of 50, right? Okay, I need a more specific chart to get this exact, but since I don't have that on hand, let's go ahead and use 50. All right, 49 is what we should be looking at. 50 should get us pretty close. So we're going to look for 84.41. I go across here in the 50 row, it should be the 49 row, looking for, 
looking for 84.41. And I see, set, I, I see all numbers that are less than that. Okay. And if I was actually at 49, do you think the, the 49 value would be a little lower than 79.49 or a little higher? It'd be a little lower because you can see when your um, sample size goes down, your chi-squared right goes down. Yeah. So um, if, I if I actually had a 49 row here, I know it would be a little bit, these numbers would be a little bit smaller. Um, 84.41 is bigger than all these values. Okay, So 84.41 would be out here somewhere. Can't see that, can you? Let me move that chart over for you. 84.41 would be out here. So then you go up, look at the top, your p-value would be up here. Okay? And as you look across this chart, I see 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01. These numbers are getting smaller. My p-value would be to the right of 0 0.005, 0 0.005. So my p-value is going to be smaller or bigger than 0 0.005? Smaller. Smaller, yep. As these numbers get smaller, the p-value would be smaller than 0 0.005. So I don't really know what it equals, but I do know it's going to be less than 0 0.005. Now, sometimes you have to double that number. When do you have to double that number? It's two-tailed. This is not two-tailed, it's one-tailed, so I don't have to double it. Step D, then, is to compare your p-value with your alpha. In this case, our problem said, oops, let me uh, to wake up. In this case, the problem said alpha was 0.05. So if alpha is 0.05, the p-value is less than 0.005. Is the p-value smaller or greater than alpha? Smaller. If the p-value is less than alpha, that tells me the test value would be in the critical region, so you should reject the null. Step E would be to summarize the claim. So if we're rejecting the null, that means we think it's false. That means we think the claim must be true. So we're going to say there is enough evidence to support the claim. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation is greater than 8 miles per hour or that 8 miles per hour is too low. That's the way it was said in the problem. Claim that sigma equals 8 miles per hour is too low. The other thing to think about is what does that p-value really mean to 0 0.005? What it means is that if the null is true, if the standard deviation is really 8, is really less than or equal to 8, okay? If that's true, then there's only a 5 out of 1,000 chance we would have come up with this test statistic or a more extreme test statistic. So if this null is true, the probability we would have gotten this or a more extreme value is only 5 out of 1,000. Very slim the chances that that would happen. So that tells me that this is probably not true, which is the reason we rejected the null. Any other questions about that?